بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا المبعوث رحمة للعالمين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يبقى قولي أما بعد All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this beautiful blessed gathering that we get together for the sake of Allah and to learn more about the book of Allah, the Quran Kareem, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had promised to preserve it. We are the ones that had revealed the Quran Kareem and we shall preserve the Quran Kareem. So the Quran Kareem is the only sacred book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had promised to preserve. And that's why the Quran Kareem has been preserved from the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam up until now to the day of judgment. The Quran Kareem is the book of Allah, the words of Allah and everything in the Quran Kareem is not 100% correct. It's a billion percent correct. Okay, everything in the Quran Kareem is not 100% correct, is a billion percent correct. It is the book of Allah, the words of Allah, and everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had spoken is the truth and only truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ We narrate to you, O oh Muhammad, the best of stories. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran Kareem, and Allah narrates to us stories of the past. And those stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention are true stories that did take place. Stories of the past. We've covered the stories of the prophets and messengers in this new series we'll be covering different stories of the past. And that's not necessarily to be good people. It could be good people and bad people. But there are stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made mention in the Quran Kareem. And the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of those stories in the Quran Kareem, not for you just to enjoy those stories, but for the purpose of you learning from their stories. What are the lessons that you're going to take from their stories? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not mentioning their stories for you just to entertain yourself. And wow, that was a very nice story. No, 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 no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those stories in the Quran Kareem for you to learn lessons out of those stories. And tonight, inshallah, we'll be talking about the story of Ashabul Jannah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to them, the people of the garden. And this story is mentioned in Surah Al-Qalam. In Surah Al-Qalam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of a story of a previous nation, a family, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to learn out of that story. And obviously, being mentioned in the Quran, Kareem, it is a story in the past, story that took place, an event that took place before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets and messengers from the time of Adam alayhi salam all the way to the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Between Adam and Muhammad is over 124,000 prophet messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent. Starts with Adam, it ends with Muhammad. The first prophet and messenger is Adam, the last prophet and messenger, and now prophet and messenger after him is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Kareem, إِنَّا بَلَوْنَاهُمْ كَمَا بَلَوْنَا أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we are testing, testing them. And the scholars say testing them is referring to the people of Quraysh. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had emerged from amongst them. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a Qurayshi. For he's from the people of Quraysh. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is from the tribe of Quraysh. He was born and raised in Mecca. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is from amongst them. They know who he is. They used to call him a sadiq al-ameen. The trustworthy and the honest man. But when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and said to them, Worship only Allah, they start to point the fingers of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and accuse the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam of being a liar, deceiver, magician, fortune teller. This is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before the revelation, a sadiq al-ameen, the honest and trustworthy, after the revelation, dishonest and untrustworthy. How does that make sense? This man does not even lie on the creation of Allah, let alone for him to lie on the creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa never lied. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never fabricated a lie on a human being. How would the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even fabricate a lie on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Inna balawnahum. We are testing the people of Quraysh. The way we tested Ashab al-Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is telling us Ashab al Jannah, the people of the Jannah. And we all know when we say the word Jannah, we understand it as paradise. Yes, Jannah is paradise. But also the word Jannah in Arabic literally means a beautiful garden. A beautiful garden. So Jannah means a beautiful garden. So if you have a very nice, beautiful forest or garden, you can call it Jannah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to beautiful gardens on the face of this earth as Jannah. But to us, when we say the word Jannah, we refer to the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created for the righteous believers in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah is saying that I had prepared for my righteous servants, no eyes had ever seen, no ears had ever heard of, and not even a mind can even imagine of. Imagine of the most beautiful garden on the face of this earth, what Allah had prepared for you as a righteous believer, is a lot better than what you could even imagine. So the word Jannah, the word Jannah means a beautiful garden. Ashab al-Jannah, the owners of the beautiful garden on the face of this earth. The owners of the beautiful garden on the face of this earth. What's the story of Ashab al-Jannah? What's so significant and so important about the story of Ashab al-Jannah? Well, it's a story about a family, five brothers. Five brothers. Sons of a righteous man who owned a beautiful garden that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to as Jannah. Everything that you could imagine of, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the owner of this garden in this garden. But the owner of this garden, the father, he was a righteous man. Because of his righteousness, he appreciated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bounty upon him. He appreciated, appreciated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gift upon him. What gift is it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him wealth. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you, that's a gift from Allah upon you. Not because Allah you sweat hard and you smart and you work smart. And you know, you work hard, this and that. Before everything else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to you. Because there's a lot more smarter people than you and I. And people work harder than you and I. And Allah didn't give it to him, but Allah gave it to you. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rizq. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed this father, this man, with this rizq, with this provision. Allah gave him a beautiful garden. Big, massive garden. That everything that you could imagine of fruits and vegetables, it existed in that garden. A blessing. And you know what? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes something away from you, it's a test. When Allah takes your wealth, it's a test. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes your health, it's a test. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes your family away from you, it's a test. But when Allah gives you, it's a bigger test. Our mindset is that when Allah takes something away from me, I'm poor, this is a big test. I'm weak, this is a big test. Yes, it's a big test. What's bigger than that is when Allah gives you. When Allah gives you health, when Allah gives you wealth, when Allah gives you influence, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you power, what do you do with it? The one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his wealth away from him, his health away from him, his family away from him, Allah is testing him. He doesn't have anything, doesn't have anything to lose anymore. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests him to see what he's going to do. But when Allah gives you, <laughs> you've got something in front of you here. I've got wealth. Allah gives you wealth to test you. What are you going to do with it? So don't think when Allah makes you wealthy, Allah is making you wealthy, Kirmala Iunak, because mashallah, you're so beautiful and smart and hard working person. No. Allah gave you wealth to test you. To the extent the wealthy people in the hereafter will stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, and after what they see from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah will question them over every single dollar and every single cent and every single wealth, they would have wished to be poor in this dunya. They would say, Ya Rabb, why did you make us wealthy? Would rather be poor and not be questioned over this wealth than having this wealth and be questioned over it. So my brothers in Islam, my sisters in Islam, when Allah takes something away from you, it's a test. When Allah gives you, it's a bigger test. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Ashab al-Jannah, the people of the Jannah, the owners of the Jannah, this beautiful garden. They were children of a righteous father that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. Inna balawnahum. And that's what Allah says, we tested them the way we tested the owners of the Jannah. It's a test. Allah gave them wealth, it's a test. What's this test? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this righteous man and father a lot of wealth. Beautiful gardens. And most of the scholars say, he was located in Yemen. That's where all the Arabs originate from. Arabs originate from Yemen. 
Not from Lebanon. Not from Egypt or Palestine. All Arabs originate from Yemen. So this righteous man with this beautiful garden that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed him, he was located in Yemen and he had this beautiful garden. And not only a beautiful garden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to give him a lot of crops. So by the end of the season, he used to have a lot of fruits and veggies. And that's when the test comes in. So what did he used to do with that? He used to divide them into three thirds. Three thirds. One third to the poor and the needy. Allahu Akbar. 33% for the sake of Allah. Not Shaykh. What's the amount of zakat they have to pay? 2.5%? Would Allah accept two? People want to negotiate 2.5%. As if Allah is waiting for him. As if Allah is waiting for you to go and give him that money. Allah needs your money. That's how it is in some people's mind. As if Allah is waiting for their money. Allah doesn't need you, doesn't need your money, doesn't need your zakat, doesn't need your siyam, doesn't need your salah, doesn't need you, doesn't need anything around you. You need Allah. So what did he used to do every time? At the end of the season when the yield comes in and he harvests the crops and the fruits and the vegetables, one third to the poor and the needy. One third for him and his family. And one third will go back into investing into his land. Beautiful, two, three thirds. One third to the poor and the needy. One third to his family. And one third gets invested back into the business. SubhanAllah, who does that these days? Really? Really? And you know what? Don't come to me with a hundred bucks and say, Alhamdulillah, I'm going to give $33. When you make a million bucks, come to me 330 grand. Let me see how far you're going to go. 100 bucks, I'll give you that. You know, if I've got 100 dollars, I'll give you the entire 100 bucks. It's not hard to give up 100 dollars. But when you've got a million bucks, 10 million, 100 million, then come and give third of your wealth. Let me see how brave you are. Let me see how brave you are. That's where the bravery comes in. When you've got a lot of money. No, Allah, when you're poor, alhamdulillah, I've got a hundred bucks, you know, I gave fifty dollars for the sake of Allah. Just like Allah khair, inshallah, that's to Allah. Allah will accept more than the one that gave fifty million. Because the one that's got fifty million has got another fifty million. You've got a hundred bucks and gave fifty for the sake of Allah, may Allah accept. So he used to give one third to the poor and the needy. One third to his family and one third back invested into the business, into the garden. And subhanallah, it became so common, he became popular amongst the poor and the needy that they knew by the end of the season they'll be lining up to get their donation. They knew, this is the end of the season, this is where he starts to harvest the crops, this is where he gets the yield. So the very next day, he'll have a lineup, a queue of the poor and the needy. People are in need, people are poor, they'll come and start taking from the season. They knew, subhanAllah, they, they, they got used to it. He's a generous man and they knew that this generous man, at the end of every season, he gives out a third of his wealth. But this righteous man passed away. Inna balawnahum kama balawna ashab al -jannah. Big test. And he left behind five boys, five sons. And then subhanAllah, now, who owns that garden? The five boys. Who controls that garden? The five boys, before it was the father. You go and give this to the poor. And you go and give this to, to the needy. And a third of our business, third of our wealth, third of our crops, third of our yield, goes to the poor and the needy. No one can even argue. Dad said, the big boss said, no one can argue. But then after the big boss and the big father passed away, what happened here? Five of them sat down. It aqsamu la yasrimunna musbihin. When the father passed away and then mashallah the business grew and then they start to have more access into the business. Some narrations say they didn't even know how much their father used to even donate. But then they've realized Allahu Akbar, we've got a lot of wealthy. Our father was crazy, he used to give a third of our wealth to those poor and the needy were four. We have more entitlement to this and we have more rights over this than anyone else. What did our father used to do that? So they worked on their garden. And mashallah, that year Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with a lot of fruits. With a huge volume of yield. A lot of fruits and vegetables. Allah blessed them that year. So what did they do? They got together. And they said, you know what? Soon 
it's the end of the season. And soon we're going to have a lot of fresh crops, a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. What are we going to do? They discuss it amongst each other. So the five of them, the five brothers are sitting down, discussing amongst each other, what are we going to do this time? Are we going to continue on the same path as the father, giving a third of our wealth back to the poor and the needy? So out of the four, sorry, out of the five, four. Four were on the same page. Out of the five, four. Four of the brothers were on the same page. What were they on the same page? They said, our father was crazy. Given out a third of our wealth, a third of our yield to those poor and needy, that these people have no rights over our wealth. We're not going to continue with what our father used to do. Four out, of, four out of the five decided not to give to the poor and the needy. Except their middle brother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem, قَالَ أَوْصَتُهُمْ Their middle brother. He said, no, no, no. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's, and there's a narration that says that the middle brother, he's the one that used to look like his father, and he used to act like his father, and he carried the legacy of his father. So out of the five brothers, four of them decided not to give to the poor and the needy. Except the middle brother said, no, no, no. We need to continue with what our father used to do. That's why Allah is blessing us. Because we give back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not blessing us because, wallah, you look good and you're tough and you're strong. No, 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 Allah is blessing us because we give back to Allah Azza wa Jal. We donate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِذْ أَقْسَمُوا لَيَسْرِمُنَّهَا مُصْبِحُونَ لَيَسْرِمُنَّهَا مُصْبِحِينَ So amongst each other, out of the five, four of them, which are the majority, there's only one, four of them decided, no more donating for the sake of Allah. No more crops, no more fruits, no more vegetables to the poor and the needy, no more. We're not going to allow this to happen. We have more rights over this world than anyone else. What should we even give it to those strangers for? What do we get out of them? And only the middle brother is objecting. So, they threatened him. They said, either with us or against us. But what's one going to do against the fool? But he didn't agree to it. But he had to tag along with them. He had to tag along with them. They're his brothers. He made... His uh, statement, he objected to what they were planning to do, but at the end of the day, he was outnumbered. So what did they decide? They said, we are coming to the end of the season. We need to do something. The very next morning, we're going to see and we're going to find a big lineup and queue of poor people and many people will be standing in front of a farm because they've been used to what a crazy father used to do. He's crazy. To them, he's crazy, of course. You know how it is these days? When you pray, you're crazy. When you keep away from the haram, you're crazy. When you don't take from the doll and you don't lie to him, you're crazy. But that's how it is. When you go and lie to the doll, mashallah, shatar, he's smart. No, he's not smart, he's a liar. He's a deceiver. But that's how it is. When you come to the lesson right now, you're crazy. You should be out there somewhere else. Go, go to the movies. Subhanallah, test. But I know as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention, we had tested them. The way we had tested, Ashab al-Jannah. So what did they plan and plot? They said, no, 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 no. We need to go early in the morning, pick our fruits and our vegetables on hide our way before the poor and the needy arrives to our farm. So they all went to sleep that night to wake up early. So the next, ver the next day, the very next day, the very next morning, they wanted to make sure they pick all the fruits and the vegetables before the poor and the needy come to the farm. So if they do come to the farm, they find nothing. That was their plan and plot. To hide away from the poor and the needy and to deprive them from what their father used to give them. And what did the father used to do that? Because he used to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَسْتَثْنُونَ Allah says. They did not even make any exception. No exceptions to anyone. They didn't say, you know what? Okay, we'll make... Out of the hundred, our father used to give a third. Okay, let's make it fifth. Let's make it tenth. Let's make it one out of a hundred. No, 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 no. They want to take that entire thing for themselves. Their father used to give a third, third, three percent. These guys don't even want to give anything. So that night, we have planned and plotted and agreed. No more to the poor. No more to the needy. 
they decided to go and sleep early and wake up early before the break of dawn and go and work on the farm and collect all the yield, collect all the fruits and the vegetables. So that very next day and that very next morning when the poor and the needy comes to the farm, they find nothing there. So they slept early. Allah tested them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent upon their farm a disaster that Allah destroyed the entire garden. That night. Subhanallah. That didn't come out of nowhere. That night. They planned and they plotted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned. And Allah is the best of planners. They decided. They slept early. But they've decided before they slept. What we're going to do tomorrow, we're going to go to the farm, we're going to go to the garden, we're going to pick all the fruits and the yield before the poor and the needy come the very next morning and make sure they get nothing. Nothing, nothing. It's not like Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they did not even make any exception. It's not like they said, okay, let's drop it from 33%. Let's drop it from a third, make it fifth, tenth, zero. فَطَافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ مِّن رَبِّكَ وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ While they were asleep, Preparing themselves to wake up early in the morning before the break of dawn so they could go and collect the yield. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, We sent upon their farm and their garden a disaster. It was a dead garden. They wake up. They got up early before the break of dawn. They usually wake up just at dawn. But this time they wake up early because they wanted to go and collect all the yield and all the fruits before the morning, before the poor and the needy comes to, before the poor and the needy come to the farm, before the poor and the needy come to the garden. So they wake each other up. Allah is describing to us this beautiful description. Allah is depicting for us this beautiful depiction in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying how rushed they were, how enthusiastic they were, motivated they were. They got up right in the middle of the night, getting themselves ready to go to the farm and to go to the garden for them to collect the yield before the poor and the needy come to the garden, as the poor and the needy got used to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they calling amongst each other, rushing each other, let's go, collect it before they come. And they're talking to each other in secret. Make sure that no poor and needy will get anything out of today. This is our objective. We're on a mission. What's our mission? To deprive the poor and the needy from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed us. When they are off to their farm, when they are off to their garden, no, no, no. Like, you know, they were shocked. Did we mislead ourselves to the wrong garden here? They looked at it. No, no, that's not a garden. It's the same route, but that's not a garden. Maybe because of the darkness. Maybe because it's so dark, we missed the road. We missed the turn off. No, 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 let's go and look for it. So they went around, checked this and that. I mean, this is the right route. This is the right path. Is this a garden? Yesterday, just yesterday, this garden was full of fruits. And overnight, now everything is destroyed. It looks like that. We've taken the wrong path. We've taken the wrong route. They went around and checked and this and that. Yes, this is our garden. This is our sign. This is our fence. What do you mean that we've taken the wrong route? We've been coming here every single year and every single day. We've been here every single day of our lives. This is not the wrong route. This is the right route. What happened here? Is this our garden? Yes. Uh, then they've realized. We planned against Allah. Because when Allah told you to do something and you got against it, you didn't plan against Allah. And look what Allah did to us. Allah deprived us because we wanted to deprive the poor and the needy. Allah deprived us because we wanted to deprive the poor and the needy. Their middle brother. So he's the third in line out of the five. Didn't Allah remind you until you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember Allah? Did I not remind you? You wanted to keep everything for yourself? You don't want to give a third for the sake of Allah? Allah took everything away from you. Because you and everything in you and everything around you and everything that belongs to you belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't belong to you. You wanted to deprive the poor and the needy? Because at the end of the day, these poor people and these needy people, they're from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's testing you with them. The poor people and the needy people, Allah's testing you with them. So you wanted to deprive them? Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had done to you. 
قالوا سبحان ربنا إن كنا ظالمين. The four other brothers acknowledged. They conceded, confessed. They said, you know what? You are right. إن كنا ظالمين. We were oppressors. We transgressed against ourselves. We we were in the wrong. We're not going to deny it. Yes, we wanted to deprive the servants of Allah. So Allah deprived us completely. We wanted to deprive the servants of Allah. So Allah deprived us deprived us completely. See what happens. You want to be tight? You only been tight upon yourself. وَمَا يَبْخَلْ فَإِنَّ مَا يَبْخَلُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ You want to be tight? You only been tight to yourself. Don't think Allah needs your dollar. Don't think Allah needs your money. Don't think Allah needs your donation. You're wrong. You want to deprive others? You are depriving yourself. Not only that, you're depriving yourself from Allah's wealth because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give you extra. You're going to deprive yourself from the Jannah in the hereafter. And that's exactly what happened to those five brothers. Their father used to give for the sake of Allah. They wanted to deprive the poor and the needy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deprived them completely. If they gave that third, not only they'll keep two thirds, Allah will bless those two thirds so they'll get more. That's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, مَا نَقَصَ مَالُ مِنْ صَدَقَةً Your wealth will never ever be reduced when you give for the sake of Allah. Donation, sadaqah, charity, will never ever reduce your wealth because Allah is going to bless it. On the contrary, you be tired, be tired to yourself. You're only depriving yourself. قَالَ أَوْسَطُهُمْ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ لَوْ لَا تُصَبِّحُونَ The middle brother told them, did I not remind you? Until you remember Allah, fear Allah, give back the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالُوا سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا They surrendered. They acknowledged, they confessed, Subhanallah. Ya Allah, forgive us. Inna kunna zalimeen. We were oppressors. We oppressed ourselves by depriving or wanting to deprive the servants of Allah. We oppressed ourselves. Ikhwani, when you commit a haram, you are only harming yourself. You're not harming anyone else. You are depriving yourself. You're not depriving other people. You know that dollar that's in your pocket that you don't want to give for the sake of Allah. Don't think you are depriving others, you are depriving yourself. قَالُوا سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا ظَالِمِينَ فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ يَتَلَاوَمُونَ They start to blame each other. It's your fault. You are the one that convinced us to do that. Your fault. You are the one that convinced us to do that. You are the one that told them. We wanted to do this, this and that. You know, when, when you're in a mess, everyone starts to blame each other. No one wants to take the blame. Everyone blames each other. That's how it is. Everyone blames each other. قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا طَاغِينَ At the end, we were all wrong except our middle brother. عَسَى رَبُّنَا أَنْ يُبْدِلَنَا خَيْرًا مِنْهَا إِنَّا إِلَى رَبِّنَا رَاغِبُونَ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and we ask Allah to give us an alternative. Maybe Allah will give us another gift in this dunya, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the jannah in the hereafter. And if it's a choice between the jannah of this dunya or the jannah of the hereafter, not, or rather the jannah of the hereafter, not the jannah of this dunya. At least it's an eternal jannah, not the jannah of this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is Allah's punishment upon those who disobey Allah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment upon those who go against the Orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't disobey Allah. Don't think, Wallah, there is pleasure or leisure in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no pleasure, there's no leisure in disobeying Allah. You will never ever be happy and content when you disobey Allah. You'll only be happy and content when you obey Allah, when you give for Allah. Subhanallah, when Allah promises that He's going to give you barakah and blessing, Allah will bless your wealth, even if you've got a dollar. Allah will bless it. So this is the story of Ashab al-Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran al-Kareem. And the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the reasons that Allah mentioned is very clear at the beginning of this verse. Inna balawnahum. We are testing the people of Quraysh the way we tested the people of Ashab al-Jannah. The people of the garden. What's the test of the people of Quraysh? We are sending you Muhammad. We are sending you the Quran. We want to save you from the hellfire. Don't go and deprive yourself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing. And right now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to save you from the hellfire. Then go and insist that you want to get in the hellfire. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. Allah gave you the salah. The salah is greater than any wealth. Allah gave you the siyam. It's better than all the money that you have. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. You should appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gift upon you. And that's Islam. The salah, the siyam, 
these gatherings, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the great gifts of Allah upon the servants of Allah. So this is the story of Ashab al-Jannah, the people of the Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us Jannah in this dunya, and more importantly, the Jannah of the hereafter. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who listen and hear, act upon what they listen and hear, inshallah, ikhwan, every single Thursday after Salat al-Maghrib, we'll be talking about stories from the Holy Quran. And inshallah, there's a number of stories that we'll be covering in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned the Quran al And the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those stories in the Quran al for you to take them as a lesson. Not to say, very nice story. Wallah, Shaykh, Jazakallah khair. No, no, no. I don't want you to tell me it's a nice story. I want you to learn. I want you to take lessons. Contemplate. Take a lesson out of those stories. And tonight we've learned a story here. Not only it's a nice story, but we've learned a lesson. And the lesson is never ever deprive yourself from the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by you disobeying Allah azza wa jal. You want to be taught? you only been taught to yourself. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who listen in here and act upon what they listen in here. Subhanak Allah, muhammadik nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. I look forward to seeing inshaAllah in the future. Some dreams to be up in Jenna, 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 Jenna. It pies past his destiny. Shall I in Jenna, 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 Jenna?